Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this workshop, How to Protect Your Assets and Loved Ones. I will get started in just a moment. I'm just going to give it a few more seconds just to let people settle in. I'd love to know where you are watching this workshop today. So let me know in the chat whereabouts in the UK you are or perhaps you're somewhere else. So I'd love to know if you could pop that in the chat for me. Now, in, the, in this workshop, I'm going to be talking about how we can achieve financial security by protecting your money and income for you and your loved ones. And how we go about that through legal help and advice so to prepare for when we pass away, for ill health by making wills and lasting powers of attorney, but also how we can overcome the things that get in our way and stop us from doing this. So like time, like talking about dying and illness. And I'll be sharing stories from the 16 years of experience of helping thousands of clients with this. And I'll also share my own personal relationship with wills and the subject of death and how my experiences have helped me through the ups and downs of life. So we, we have people in Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire, rather. Thank you for that. That's great. I'm in Kent, which is not too bad today, actually. We've got a bit of sunshine, which is great to see. And the reason for running these workshops is because I see the struggles that people have when it comes to making wills and lasting powers of attorney, not knowing how to get started with it, not knowing how to go about making them, but also not appreciating the importance of doing it and the consequences that that can then have if we don't. So I really wanted to find a way of overcoming all of that and breaking it down, making it easy to put these protections in place with wills and lasting powers of attorney. So let's get started. And that brings me nicely to my first question. And again, I'd, I'd, if, if, if you would like to share and pop in the chat for me, perhaps you've made a will before. So question number one, have you made a will before? Do you know what a will and lasting power of attorney is? And also, do you have conversations about dying? So again, I'd love to know. Let me know in the chat if any of those are true for you. And I'll give you a moment to do that. Just I'll give me an opportunity just to have a sip of water. So, yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Just whilst anybody would like to share any thoughts on those questions. My aim then today, my plan for this workshop is to give you as much information as possible. And we've got an hour, roughly an hour together. Ask any questions, anything you like. So there's no question off limits. And then at the end, I'll be sharing how you can work with me if this is of interest. And I'll take you through my how to protect your assets and loved ones process. And that'll be for five minutes at the end. And I'll also be sharing a free gift as part of that as a little thank you. So as I say, I will, there will be some time at, at the end for questions and here to help as much as possible. If that sounds useful, again, let me know in the chat. But that is the, the aim and the plan for the workshop today. And the information I'm going to be sharing with you today has come from many clients and people who I've helped and had conversations with over the last 16 years of, of working within this area of law and helping clients, supporting them to make their wills, to make their powers of attorney, but also to deal with probate and an estate administration, and also helping those with relatives who have dementia and supporting them through that. And especially 
over the last two years, which was when I became self-employed consultant solicitor, and I began to really understand what my clients' challenges were and what their needs were. And what I have seen is the common reasons why people fail, why they struggle to make wills and lasting powers of attorney. And if you look at the statistics, we'll see we still have a large part of the population in the UK who haven't made a will. And it usually hovers around 60%, but that's not including lasting powers of attorney. So there are some struggles relating to this. So we've got some comments in the chat. So thank you for that regarding will. So some of you know what a will and power of attorney is. So that's really great to see. So here are the five points and there's five kind of key common reasons why people struggle, why people fail to make wills and powers of attorney. And the first is they think they have plenty of time to make them. They leave it until it's too late and it isn't prioritised. I think there is a misconception that wills are something that you make in later life or at a point when perhaps you may become ill. And in reality, I, I, I do believe that you we should be focusing on making wills and powers of attorney at, a, at any age. We don't know what's around the corner. So tomorrow isn't guaranteed. For me, it's not guaranteed for any of us. So it's a, it's, it's a good opportunity to consider that and make them at whatever age we are we are at and whatever stage of life we are at. But also it does give an opportunity, the earlier we make them, it gives us an, an opportunity to really think about them and have have the the mindset and the ability to to make them and get the most out of that. And perhaps if we do leave it till we're in later life or if we if or at a crisis point, even if we become ill, then we may not actually be able to do them at all. And the second reason is people start to make wills, lasting powers of attorney, but they don't finish them. And unfortunately, a will or power of attorney is not legally binding unless we finish them. And I sometimes hear from people, well, I've started to make them. I've recorded what I would like to happen and that's enough. And my relatives or whoever it may be, they know what my wishes are. And that's a good starting point. And it's great that they have been started, but they won't be legally binding unless they have been finished and the whole process has been completed, which is really, really important. The third reason is not discussing with anyone what they would want to happen when they die or become ill. So the fear of discussing death and illness gets in the way. And I'll be talking more about this later on in the workshop. But I think as a society, we, we do shy away from those conversations about death. And it's not a subject we generally speak about or want to speak about for some that is you know not everybody but for the majority I think that is the case and that stops us from making our wills and powers of attorney the fourth key reason is not appreciating how important a will and lasting power of attorney is and connected with that is the final point is they think it's simple and it's just this document that needs to be written. And that ultimately means they don't get help and attempt to do it themselves. And again, I'll talk about this in a lot more detail later on, but there are so many options nowadays for making a will, doing it ourselves or a, a lesser service option, but that's not necessarily the right approach depending on your own situation. What I would love to know, just take a moment here and just reflect on those five reasons and just have a think about which one most relates to you. So which one resonates out of those five key points? Which one resonates with you and perhaps 
which one are you struggling with right now? So put the number in the chat for me. Again, I'd love to know. It might be that all of them resonate with you. And that's fine. Just 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 say all of them. But let me know the number again, pop in the chat for me, the number of the one which you relate to the most, which perhaps you're struggling with at the moment. I'd sort of love, love to know if they are resonating with you. And again, I'll give you a moment to do that just while I take another sip of water. But the good thing for today's workshop is we will be focusing in on all of those key points. So we'll look at those in a little bit more detail to, you know, really kind of dig into that and, and try and unpick, well, why are these, these key points, these reasons, a, a particular issue? So I can see some of you just taking some time to have a think about it. So, yeah, as I say, just pop in the chat the number of any of those reasons that do resonate from you. Just while you are doing that, I'll just explain an overview for today's session. So this is how I've structured the session. So broken down into parts and in part one, we're going to have a look at protection and that's how we get started. So where, where do we actually start, which is the part we really need to focus on. And then in part two, we'll look at support. So how do we get it right for you in your own individual circumstances and to make sure we get the correct advice for us? And then in part three, which is decisions, that will focus in on how do we get all of this done and make sure that we have these protections in place. So that's getting over the, the, the blocks that we can sometimes have when it comes to making our wills and powers of attorney so there's some key points coming up coming in so somebody's mentioned point three so yes you know I, I i think that's a really really good good point and you know discuss the fear of discussing death we'll, we'll look at that in a bit detail in a moment and i think a lot of people do struggle with that so thank you someone's just mentioned getting cut off signal is bad I don't know whose end that is, but if someone else wouldn't mind just popping in the chat for me to see if you can hear me OK. I think my signal is is OK. I'm actually plugged in today rather than on Wi-Fi just to avoid any issues. So thank you. That, that's perfect. Thank you, Gary. It's working OK. Thank you, Grace. All good. So and there might be some issues elsewhere. So hopefully we'll see how we go. So that's the plan. That's the overview for the workshop. Just very briefly, a little bit about me for those of you who perhaps don't know me. So I'm a consultant solicitor at Richard Nelson Solicitors. I'm also a visiting lecturer at the University of Law and a private client law trainer. So I train within the area of wills, powers of attorney, probate and all the other different areas that that, that comes, comes with. I am on a bit of a mission to make sure everybody has protections in place when they become ill or die and also educating about the importance of wills and lasting powers of attorney. And I'll talk through today, I mentioned earlier, how I've helped clients with this and share examples, which have all come from discussions with clients from the people I've helped over these last 16 years, particularly over the last couple of years, as I mentioned, since I really started to understand my clients when I started my self-employment journey. If we're not already connected on LinkedIn, I suspect most of you on the workshop today will be, but there is a QR code there which you can use. So put your camera at the screen, that'll take you through to my profile. So if we're not connected on LinkedIn, I'd love to connect with you so please do feel free to do so. And I say you can use that QR code to do that. And do connect with me as opposed to just follow, because it'd be great. We can interact with each other's content, which would be fantastic. So before I move into the in-depth content, I wanted to address why we should be focusing on wills and lasting powers of attorneys now. 
So why at this time, you know, when we are facing a lot of challenges at the moment, so why is it important, so important now? There are lots of reasons, in all honesty, why it is important, but there are a few common reasons, shall we say, why it is important or main reasons. And those are to protect your loved ones and family or those closest to you, whatever family looks like for you. Also to protect your property and money. And then to protect your business, if you have if you have a business, but also your income and finances. It's useful here just to pause and make the distinction between a will and power of attorney and just explain why both are needed. So a will. And somebody mentioned this in the, in the chat earlier, a will sets out and deals with your wishes when you pass away. A lasting power of attorney is dealing with and setting out your wishes, for what you would like to happen if you become ill and perhaps you then also can't make your own decisions. So it, it is a key distinction and they are they do go hand in hand. So having both is really important. And other reasons why they are important is we could die without any protections in place. We want to make sure our money, our property, our assets go to who we want them to go to and not to somebody else. If we own a business, that could come to a grinding halt. We don't want to lose income as a result of that, which could mean a loss of business, a loss of the app and ultimately the closure of the business. If we become ill, then decisions, we want to ensure those decisions can be made on our behalf. So that might be health related, but equally finance related. So it could be even the simple decisions of paying the bills and running the house just to make sure that we have somewhere to live and we can continue to make sure our, our, our life is in order and our life can continue ultimately. But also it gives security to those we leave behind. So just as much as, as we want this peace of mind, we also want security for those who, who are left behind. Now, I mentioned pets here. That's really important if you do have them. So I, funnily enough, one of the reasons why I update my will regularly just to cater for the pets. So a really important part of the process for the pet lovers out there. So if anybody does have a pet, actually, let, again, let me know in the chat. I'd love to know. But it's just, again, it's making sure that there are there is a plan and the right people are going to be able to look after our pets. Now, why this again, why this is important is because this is what can happen if we don't have a will. I'm not going to spend long on this slide at all because it is really confusing, but it does illustrate the point quite well. So how do we get started with all of this? So what do we need to put all of this into place? And this is what part one is about. And this is the area that the majority of the people that I help and the people I speak to, they don't do these actions. The, the, this part of the process is completely missing. And unfortunately, they do fail. Again, the reasons for failing to make the wills and to make the powers of attorney is because they don't take these steps. And I see and notice this all the time. Whenever I speak to somebody, it, it is almost guaranteed that these are the key stumbling blocks at the very start. And the first one is plan. The second is those important conversations. So conversations about death and illness and what we would like to happen. And then the third is making a decision. If we look at plan and planning, what do we mean by that? Well, most think, and I mentioned this earlier, that wills, nice and powers of attorney are simple and easy to do. And they are just this document. We perhaps know that we should have them in place. 
but we need to give it some context. And I realised this, strangely, not that long ago. I talked a little bit at the beginning about my experience since becoming self-employed and working as a consultant. But, you know, surprisingly, I've been doing this for 16 years, there, thereabouts. But it wasn't until these last few years that, that I realised, well, actually, wills and powers, sorry, wills and lasting powers of attorney are so much more. And that allowed me to think about, well, what do we need? What do my clients need to make them work for them? So in order to give it context, we need to think about what we have. So our assets and liabilities. So what money, what property do we have? What personal possessions do we have? What expenses have we got? Note them down, record them. And then the second point is a family tree. So just actually taking the time to draw up a family tree so you can map out and see, well, who's going to be involved in the process of making a will and power of attorney? And I'll, I'll explain later why that's key and why that's really important. And then we need to record those wishes or make our wishes known in tangible in a tangible form so it's really thinking about at this planning stage what our loved ones and what our business partners if we have a business what do they need to know and then we can use a letter of wishes which is something separate to a will and lasting power of attorney to record all of this information so people know what we want and that's in addition to just having our will document, our power of attorney document. And this was important to John, Paul and Ben. Now, I mentioned earlier, I'm going to share some examples of clients have helped. So an amalgamation of all the clients have helped over the years and the typical struggles they have. So just to say for confidentiality reasons, no real names here. So just to say it's a collective example of clients I've helped over the years. So let me just tell you a little bit about John, Paul and Ben. So their circumstances were, so they were a, a couple living together. There was a, a, a concern, a worry, because the home, so their, their home that they lived in, their family home was just in John Paul's name. They had various personal effects as well, which they wanted to make sure passed down to the crack people they did have have business interests now they were in later life so their business interest was a way of supplementing their income during their retirement they wanted to record what they would like in the event that they became ill so what's going to happen both of them became ill how they wish to be cared for in later life but also there was this niggling concern that the house was just in John Paul's name. So what did that mean if John Paul needed care and and what would happen to, to Ben? Would he be able to still have a home to live in? And also thinking about the financial side of that. So what happens if John Paul goes into care? Will equity release be a possibility? So they'd started to make wills and lasting powers of attorney, but they did get stuck. And they had all these conflicting concerns, which I spoke about a moment ago. So there were lots going on for them. They also needed a certificate provider for the lasting powers of attorney. And just to explain, certificate provider is a person who helps you with making lasting powers of attorney, but their role is to say, OK, I've discussed this with you. I'm satisfied that you understand the lasting power of attorney, that you're able to make them and you're not. You don't have an illness which is affecting your ability to make this decision about the power of attorney. So it's safeguarding and a way of, of just making sure people understand what they're doing. They're not being forced into making it. And that's the role I take when I help people and assist people with making their lasting powers of attorney. 
what did we do together? So we actually recorded who would manage the business interest. So again, using this letter of wishes, which you can use for all sorts of different areas. So we made sure the personal effects went to the crap people and we sat out and had those conversations about what they both would like if they became became ill or needed care in later life or, or at some point, whenever that may be. As I say, it could happen to any of us at any point in life. And I acted as the certificate provider, so they didn't have the stress of finding someone to do it, to do that role, explaining what they needed to do. And once all this had been done, they knew that their assets were secure. They had that peace of mind and particularly the peace of mind that Ben wouldn't be left without a home. So that's John, Paul and Ben. Now, a second area that the majority don't do it's having those important conversations which I spoke a little bit I spoke earlier about and I've mentioned already we don't necessarily speak about death and dying it's a bit of a taboo subject maybe it's in our in our society and interestingly I, I listened to a podcast not that long ago, which was talking about this in the context of grief. And it was saying that in some cultures that they would have a period of of grieving, but it was almost like they were, well, it was that they were, they were the best, the best way I could describe it is probably not the right words, but they were all out in their grieving. So they were really going through this grieving process and allowing themselves to, to grieve and that the idea being that after that period of time that they that they then could go about their daily life and you know ideally the the by going through that they were perhaps managing probably the wrong words but you know helping them with their grief you know in a shorter time period and really really interesting but we, if we don't speak about it, we then don't have the tools to deal with it. So if it's happening to us, to one of our relatives, we don't have the tools to manage those conversations or even what to do when we're, we're put in that situation. And that then puts the... Sometimes it makes the person who is going through that illness puts them in a difficult position because they may want to talk about it but their family, their loved ones, those closest to them may not want to do so. And this is what's, and I mentioned this earlier, this is what's preventing us from making our wills and lasting powers of attorney. Yet this is something we all have in common. We are all going to die one day. And this is what happened to me. So, I hit a certain stage in life and I have to say that this photo was taken quite a few years ago and I've just realised I still have hair in that picture. But this was taken a while ago and it was at a time when I was thinking about death because I'd reached that, you know, a certain point in life. And surprisingly, it's not something I had necessarily engaged with, despite the fact that what I'd been doing during my career for the last goodness says how many years but it did coincide with the start of 2020 and what was happening to the world at that point. But once I'd engaged with the idea that, yes, I have only a limited amount of time on this earth, it really helped me to understand what I wanted to get out of life and what was important to me, what really brought me joy and what did I really want to spend my days doing? And it helped me to live in the present, really. And it did give me the courage to go out into self-employment, so become a consultant solicitor and do something which I, I was really, had thought about it in the past, but couldn't come to a decision. But not only that, it connects us with our loved ones. So we're then not worrying about what's going to happen to them when we die. Because we've had those conversations already. And perhaps, and the hope is that we are a bit more open. 
but it is an interesting subject to talk about. Try it. Try bringing it to the dinner table one day and you might might be surprised that it does open up a lot of different conversations, goes down lots of different routes. And they, they, these are just some photos of what I've been doing over the last few years, really. So, you know, going through this and being self-employed allowed, opened so many different avenues, allowed me to do lots of different things. So we must slow down and just reflect on what we really want. And if we can give ourselves permission to have these conversations, it will help. And it will help to have to talk to those closest to us, talk openly about death and then not have any regrets when we do pass away. And if we feel that we can't have those conversations with those closest to us, then it may be that by starting the process of making our wills and having conversations with a professional that that can then open the floodgates when we get those two things right so our planning and our important conversation it gets so much easier to do so it be begins to come together and ultimately it's easier to make our wills and lasting powers of attorney so you and your loved ones know what to do because you've talked about it. You know how to get started with putting the protections in place and what you will need and how to approach it. And this is what I helped Sandra with. And Sandra needed to update her will. So she had actually already got to a point where she'd made a will. But she did need lasting powers of attorney. Wanted to downsize and move house. The real concern for, for Sandra was burdening her two friends. To her friends who were those closest to her. She had family, but not immediate family. Didn't necessarily have a lot of contact with them. But she wanted her friends to be her executors and attorneys. Um, attorneys under the power of attorney. So they were the people who were going to help her with all of this. And we had conversations with all of them. So the idea was that if we spoke, if I was able to, to speak to all of them, give them guidance, to give her friends some guidance as to what's going to be expected of them. And then we could then discuss and record all that, which helped the friend, Sandra's friends, to feel that... They had a clear picture of what was needed. They understood what they were doing. But Sandra also understood what she had in place, what was going to be expected. And we worked out a plan. And then she no longer felt that her friends would be burdened. And again, with Sandra, she did have conflicting concerns. So she was worried about making sure her will protected some of her family members, her friends were to be included. And she was planning on this move. So that need to, needed to be factored in to the lasting powers of attorney. Now, at the end of this session, and I mentioned at the beginning, at the end, I'll, I'll talk through, if this is of interest, how you can work with me. But if you would like a chance to speak to me about creating your plan, then I'm going to put up a link in a moment to book a short session in and we'll go through creating your plan, who to have those important conversations with, get some clarity about your circumstances. So there's a link there which is to my calendar. So again, use your camera, point it at the screen, it'll take you through to my calendar where you can actually book in a call with me and i'm going to leave that qr code on the the slides throughout the rest of the workshop and i'll talk a little bit more about that at the end as well just for a few minutes now my top tips then for part one and protection give context so really 
think about the wills and powers of attorney. You may need someone to help with that. Sometimes it just does need somebody. It is more than a document, more than this legal document, but also engage with death. Let's have those conversations and we can then start to live our best life. And then finally, decide to do it. So most won't get that far. But if we can make a decision, then we're one step closer. Has part one been useful? I'd love to know. So again, just pop in the chat for me if that has been useful. It's an important starting point to make sure you get the correct advice for you and the wills and the lasting powers of attorney. So they do what you need them to do. And this is what part two is about. So it's focusing in on what you need to do to get them tailored for you and then putting everything in place. And this is the area that the majority, again, the majority of my clients and the people that I speak to, they get this part wrong. So there are actions that they take, but they aren't necessarily the right actions and they are then ineffective and it's not helping them to make their wills and powers of attorney. And this is what part two is about. So how can we get the correct advice for our, our own situation? And there are two things we need to do for this. One is to implement and the other is communication and action. There are two elements to implementing. One is a deep dive. And the second is getting help. I'm going to dive into those two areas in a bit more detail. I'm just going to take a moment just to have a sip of water. And you could take a moment to reflect. Oh, thank you for the comments. Um, great value. Thank you. Appreciate that. So good. I'm glad part one's been useful. So, as I say, two elements to, to this implementation. So I deep dive and get help. So what do I mean then by deep dive? Well, it's an extension to planning. It's a little bit more than that. And it's thinking about why. What I've noticed, whenever a client comes to me to make their wills and powers of attorney, there is always a reason why they are doing, doing it at that stage. So something's happened in their life which has made them decide, now is the time, I must do this. And ironically, that's always about death. And again, there are lots of reasons for this, which I'll... I'll talk a little bit about now so you know it might be protecting your partner as we saw with john paul and ben it might be the children the business needs protecting it might be to save tax so really topical at the moment or certainly has been well always is in all honesty so inheritance tax you know people don't want to be paying unnecessarily or un unnecessary inheritance tax we might want to exclude somebody from our will we might have difficult relationships. That's also a trigger. It might be divorce, a new relationship, a recently married or entering into a civil partnership. So all these reasons give a why. And it's helpful to start uncovering that why, because that then will then allow us to focus on what's important to you. So the will and powers of attorney can be tailored to you. There's just a few examples there on the slides of people have helped and gone through the process, the, my will making powers of attorney process with. And there are other reasons, again, linked to why. I think why is really interesting concept because you've probably come across this before lots of people talk about why in a in a career context in a business context some of you may have heard of simon sinek who talks a lot about why really, really interesting subject 
but it might be to protect our money from care costs. Somebody may have died recently, so a relative or a, a friend, and that's really opened up those conversations I was talking about earlier and made us decide that this is the time I want to take action. I spoke earlier about making sure our assets go to the correct people to organise our finances. A, an advantage or, or an extra, if you like, of making a will and a power attorney is will help us to organise our finances. And again, that's something we tend to put off. I know I have certainly becoming self-employed. That has been a challenge and I've had to get my head around doing that. We might be worried what will happen if we become ill. So again, going back to John Paul and Ben, having to think about what their wishes were or security and peace of mind, that lack of control. If we don't have a will in place, you may well remember this diagram from earlier. So again, complex if we don't have a will. But then it means we are or we do lose that control over what we want to happen. So that's the first element. So really have a think about why and what's driving you to make a will and that's power of attorney. Now, the second element is to get help. And most think they can do it themselves or even take a substan substandard option. So I mentioned earlier, there are so many options for making wills nowadays. We do see wills advertised for 20, 30 pounds. We see the DIY kits in DeWeight Smiths, if they still have them. But that doesn't tailor them to you. I may even put us in a difficult position because we don't necessarily know the ins and outs and the legal aspects of making a will and a power of attorney. And other things that happen is people will speak to family and friends who've done it before. They will ask Google. And that results in the wrong advice because it's generic. So, again, it's not tailored to you. It's good to speak. Have Again, have those conversations. It's good to speak to people. But if we are sharing stories and, and potentially advice and information, that's not going to be right for you, and particularly when it comes to Google. You know, I'm still certainly, uh, you, you know, I so, sorry, use Google, get my teeth back in, use Google quite a lot for information. And I know, I know that it's not necessarily going to give me the right information. So the advice needs to be tailored. We all have different circumstances. We all have different needs. We all have different challenges. And that's really important part of the process. And I thought thought of this, but I've just put there on the slide a couple of, well, probably a year or so ago. And it really made me realise that this is probably the most important legal service you will ever use because it goes back to, well, what does it do? What does it protect? It's protecting our loved ones. It's protecting our money, our property, our assets our business, our finances, our well, well-being. But we need to make sure that we get the correct legal advice to make sure they are legally binding. They do what we need them to do. And in all honesty, they are worthless without legal advice because they haven't been tailored. And it is great that we have lots of different options for will making because not everybody will be in a position to take advice but there are thankfully options when that's not a possibility again it just shows that all our circumstances are very very different and wills and powers of attorney they are not off the shelf product they are not generic And this is what happens when it all goes wrong. So if we are taking a DIY approach, I have come across a lot of situations where this has been 
a a real challenge and not resulted in in the right outcome and this is tim so tim's story so tim did make a homemade will so it was a diy pack and unfortunately the correct formalities were not used when signing and witnessing the will and that meant the will was not legally binding the reason why this was important was because Tim wanted to leave his house to a really close friend. So Tim had distant relatives, so he didn't have immediate family, but he had relatives who we knew about but didn't have much contact with. But because the will was invalid, those relatives inherited under the rules. That Remember that diagram from earlier? The rules which sets out what happens where we don't have a will, the rules of intestacy as they're known. So the friend did, didn't receive Tim's property and that's what Tim wanted. And it's a similar story with Mike. So Mike and his father, and they wanted to make, well, Mike's father wanted to make lasting powers of attorney. And again, they were taking the DIY approach. But by the time they decided to do it, Mike's father was, well, his dementia was worsening. And Mike needed to be able to help his father make decisions about his finances, make decisions about his care, access bank accounts. But unfortunately, because of the dementia, his father's mental capacity was in doubt. So if you lack mental capacity, so if you have an illness which is affecting your decision making ability, and you do lack that mental capacity, you can't make powers of attorney. So I actually helped to arrange a mental capacity assessment. So I helped Mike and his father after they'd started making them, and I was able to arrange an assessment, which ultimately meant they could make, or his father could make the lasting powers of attorney. They could be completed, Mike could help his dad manage his finances, pay the bills, access his bank accounts, but also help with decision making. So make his father more comfortable so he could live well. And if we don't have a power of attorney, we have the court of protection, which you may have heard of, but that's putting another barrier in the way. So it will take some time. I mean, it, in all honesty, powers of attorney take a long time to be registered at the moment, and they need to be registered before they can use. But that's, what, again, another reason why it's important to do them earlier rather than later, so you're not in a position where you're waiting for them to be registered. Or if you haven't got a power of attorney, you go to court of protection, you're waiting a long time, you're in limbo then, you're stuck, you can't do anything. And that presents real challenges. And the second part of, of, of this section I mentioned earlier, so communication and action. So what do we mean by communication and action? And I've touched upon this a little bit. So instead of speaking to people and asking Google, which will give you the generic advice, it's not tailored to you, spend the time writing out what's important to you. So write a list of questions. What do you need to know? What What's your priorities? Because again, in all honesty and in reality, sometimes there are going to be conflicting priorities when it comes to making a will or a power of attorney. And this is what I help Jill with. So Jill, so I sent her a checklist of specific points to consider. We could then draw out the information so we could tailor the advice to Jill and importantly, discover her why and priorities. So Jill had some friction within the family. There was a business. She had an income from that, a partner, joint property. She was also due to marry. So all of these things we needed to investigate and I needed to be able to draw out and get that information in order to give the specific advice for Jill's circumstances. And Jill wanted to benefit other people in the family as well, which meant a different structure for the will. 
my top tips for support then so i talked a lot about why so do have a think about your why remember diy may ultimately cost you more in the long run a tailored approach is really important wills and powers of attorney are different for everybody but also keep in mind the importance of what you're doing as well and that will really help keep it top of mind concentrate on the things that you need to do to make them work for your circumstances and once you've done that you can then look at making a decision so pulling it all together and putting this into action so how do we actually get the wills and powers of attorney done how do we get them in place and again the, the truth of it is a lot of people do take a shortcut when it comes to making wills and powers of attorney the diy approach they're not taking legal advice because of this idea that it's simple but it does mean it doesn't get the intention it deserves we're not doing enough to make sure it can make a real difference in your life and one of the other issues i've i've i often come across is that people don't actually know what they have in place so they may make a will and power of attorney and that they may have done it professionally they may have done it themselves but they don't really know well, what do i actually have and neither do the relatives so our loved ones are part of this process because there may be our executors who are helping when we die deal with our estate and our will there may be the attorneys in the power of attorney who are making decisions for us but they need to know what their responsibilities are and what they need to do so there is a better way and this is my wills and powers of attorney process it's probably better if i show you and again give an example of what i did with Stephen sue to illustrate how this works and i've just explained a little bit about Stephen and sue's circumstances so they were unmarried partners they did have children from previous relationships adults and children under the age of 18 so minors they were professionals and uh, sue was a business owner they had extended family they had joint assets they had sole assets they had personal possessions and pets see pets again really important for the for our pet lovers out there but also social media was really important to them because they had lots on lots of memories they had lots of of contacts and content from social media which was important from both a personal and business perspective so again social media is an area we need to focus in on when we're making our wills and powers of attorney so for a combination of bringing all this information together which i've spoke about in the other parts of today's workshop planning stage our initial fact find and then the one-to-one -one support with me we could uncover the why and then work out our tax situation consider what assets are part of our will of the wills do we need to change how they are owned for example and that might be to protect them or again to save tax inheritance tax consider the structure of the will so how best can we actually protect our assets and loved ones we might be concerned about care in later life consider what will happen if our business sorry we we'll consider what would happen if we die so if Stephen Stu passed away what would happen to the business who's going to look after it is there going to be an interruption in their income stream and it also enabled me to get a full picture of the family tree i spoke about the family tree earlier and this is why it's really important because it identifies who's going to be part of the will who's going to be included who the executives are going to be work out who gets what prioritize the family members who are important identify the protections that the children need and also the legal implications so Stephen Stewart were unmarried so what did that mean 
from a will perspective. And it meant if they made a, a will and they got married in the future, the will would be automatically invalidated if they married or entered into a civil partnership, unless they'd put something in the will which covers that. So there's all these different things that we need to uncover. And it was the same in the powers of attorney. So business planning, who the attorneys are going to be, who who will who can take that role? We don't want to overburden those who may not be able to do it. And think about the medical decisions and the health related issues when it comes to powers of attorney. And then we talked about the digital assets, our digital memories, our social media. What's going to happen to them when we die or when we get ill? And all of this work enabled me to draw up the wills, powers of attorney, specifically for Stephen Sue's circumstances. They had the correct legal advice, all the documents in place, the letter of wishes. Everything was really secure. The family was secure. Didn't need to worry. Their wishes were known by everybody. They knew their assets were going to go to the crap people. We considered the inheritance tax. We considered the crap people, how the business might be able to operate. Their finances were, were in order. And they had peace of mind and less stress. They were more open about discussing death and Ill, Ill health and related health issues. Now, in addition, with Stephen Sue, I offer a free 30 minute review within two years of drawing up a will and I'd also powers of attorney to an extent. So just in case anything needs to be updated or changed. And that's really important to keep our wills and powers of attorney updated. Doesn't necessarily mean that changes are needed. But if we can review them every couple of years, that will just help us to connect and make sure our circumstances haven't changed so that it, it, it they do need a bit of a tweak. So keeping on top of, of everything as well, again, really, really important. So my top tips for decisions. So take the time to think about the why. Enjoy the process. You know, it, it can be enjoyable. And there's a few of us there. Well, I won't read those, those out there. No, for you to have a look at. They'll be in the recording as well, which I'll, I'll circulate after today. So if you want to look back on those. So for peace of mind, protection and security. So for loved ones, for our assets and business. A tailored solution. So we need that advice, which is specific to our circumstances. No mistakes. We don't want to be worrying about what's going to happen when we've gone, who's going to be left to sort that out. If we follow this process, don't leave it to chance. So I mentioned earlier, I will talk through and just give you a bit of information about how you can work with me if this is of, of interest. So if it does sound the perfect thing for you and you would like that personal help and support, find out more information or just have a conversation around, we'll talk through your exact circumstances. Let's gain some clarity, pinpoint your why. We can talk about that, make an action plan and also start the ball rolling. And I hadn't forgotten, I'd made... A, or mentioned at the start a free gift so for anybody who does book a call in I will send them a copy of my ultimate guide to protecting your digital memories so that focuses on digital assets and your social media accounts so how to set them up so you don't lose the content when you when you pass away but also when if you become ill so you might want somebody to be able to access them then as well And that my process there. And, you know, I've done this with lots of clients, just some examples here of the clients have helped over the years, the work we've done together. And it, 
how that has an impact on how we see making wills and powers of attorney. It's not just seeing this as our something we need to do, you know, this this simple document we need to have in place. So QR code there again on the screen, which will take you to my calendar to book in a call if you'd like to do so. There are on a free come, sorry, first come, first serve basis. So there are 10 calls available. So as I say, you can put your camera on the screen, that'll take you to a link to my calendar and you can choose a time and book in a call at your convenience. And sort of conscious of time, I did promise questions at the end. So if anybody does have any questions, I'll just check the q and I meant to mention actually at the start, put any questions in the Q&A. So if anybody does have any questions, pop them in the Q&A for me. And I'll just take a look in a moment, see if any questions have come in. But happy to take any questions and stay on for another five, ten minutes in case anybody would like to ask any burning questions. As I mentioned before, no question is off limits. I'll just leave those. So the diary link and QR codes and links to my calendar for anybody who would like to book in a call. So let me just have a quick look at the Q&A. Let's just bring this over here. So as I say, happy to hang on for five more minutes in case there are any questions. So I'll give everybody an opportunity to type in the Q&A. Any questions? Just so what, what I would say as well, just uh, as as final top tips, do have a, a real think about the why and, you know, what's the reason? And I mentioned before that a lot of the time it's not necessarily about death when we're thinking about a will. There's something going on in our life, which is OK, and I really want to do that. And then the other top tip is think about when to do it. So, you know, I mentioned now doing it, focusing on it now because of the challenges we have, but also, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. So we should be doing it at whatever stage of our life we are at. And, you know, it, it can be a really thought-provoking and interesting subject to talk about you know and that will help us that will open up these discussions connect us with our family and loved ones and as I've mentioned before if if you need somebody else to speak about starting to make the will with a professional will allow that to happen so those are the top tips I, I would suggest Thanks for the comments, everyone. A few thank yous coming in. Oh, much appreciated. Very formative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very thought provoking. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate those comments. So, as I say, if anyone does have any questions, can't see any coming in. So, I will wrap up shortly. I'll just give it another minute in case anybody does want to raise a question. But thank you so much for attending today. Really appreciate that. Hope it has been thought provoking. And again, if you'd like to speak with me, if it's of interest, feel free to book in a call. That would be fantastic. But have a great rest of the week. So halfway through the week. So hope you enjoy the next few days. And as I say, thank you once again for attending.